Hello everyone, my name is Rochelle Innocent and I'm the founder and CEO of Project Purpose. Welcome to our channel. <laughs> our community is focused on fostering the intellectual and character development in children. We do this through our parent-child workshops that are focused on four themes, autonomy, self-efficacy, compassion, and self-concept in order to cultivate grit, perseverance, and resilience in each child. At Project Purpose, our overarching mandate is to renew and rebuild family, community, and relationships. Our different social media platforms provide us with an opportunity to have discussions on all topics that relate to family, community, and relationships with ourselves as well as with others, with a primary focus on mental health and education. More precisely, the ways that the institutions of mental health and education have played a role and currently play a role in our societies at large. These discussions and debates provide us with an opportunity to think critically about what needs to change within these structures in order for us to live up to our bold slogan, support, protect, and empower each child through youth-focused development, better known as leadership in juvenescence. We recognize that in valuing our children's leadership potential, this also translates as recreating and co-creating environments, both socially and politically, that will enable our children to thrive. For those of you who are particularly keen on the topic, we do write thought pieces every other Sunday and we have one scheduled to drop this upcoming Sunday. So definitely be sure to check that out once you're done watching this segment. And of course, if you're out and about and on the go, we are now available on nine different podcast platforms. We've recently joined Apple Podcasts, CastBox, and Overcast. And now I believe we're available on pretty much all podcast platforms. So definitely tune in, subscribe to us there. And of course, as is the convention, subscribe to us here on our YouTube channel. Definitely like, comment, and share this segment. Let's get into it. Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. For those of you who are new, we cover topics that relate to mental health, mental wellness, and education on a week-by-week -week basis. And this week our topic of discussion is going to be on mental health. Now before jumping into today's segment, I want to go over a few housekeeping items. First and foremost, we have launched our live events. So moving forward, we will be having two major live events each specific month. Each month will be a different theme of focus where we engage with a concept or an idea, we define it, and we do a deep dive. We do some thought exploration together. And I wanna facilitate these sessions, facilitate this conversation, but it really gives us an opportunity to think critically about the way that we frame, create, and maintain certain themes that are really important in order to enable us to cultivate grit, perseverance, and resilience as adults. So our first live event will be taking place on September 15th at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern and we're going to be focusing on joy. So we're going to be defining joy and when we define joy we're going to define joy across several different frames and different perspectives and then we're going to see which perspective is the best to leverage depending on the situation and context and we're going to do a deep dive there. And then if you're really engaged our second our part two on joy will be how to create and maintain joy and that will be on September 29th at seven o'clock Eastern. So definitely be sure to purchase your tickets. We offer our tickets at $14.99. So they are live paid events. If it is the case that you want to participate on an ongoing basis, we do have membership plans. So we do have membership plans. We'll offer you a discount on the participation. And I promise these interactions are going to be lively. They're going to be thought provoking and hopefully they're going to be enlightening. I mean, that's going to be the goal. That's going to be the objective. And we're going to create community around building these ideals into our lives and creating lifestyles that incorporate these frames of references in order for us to have a higher degree of wellness, mental health, and of course, achieving that through education. So that was a little bit of a housekeeping item that I wanted to cover there. And let's jump into today's segment. So today we're gonna to be talking about managing disruption and disruptions typically will feel like struggle. So I thought it would be great to cover disruption in today's video as a complement to our earlier discussion this week on struggle. I wanted to talk a little bit about how we deal and manage with disruption. So by its own definition, disruption catches us by surprise. It can blindside us. And and the way we respond to it is everything. And I find the best way to help ourselves respond to disruption is by creating different values and beliefs around how we cope and manage disruption 
information beforehand. So a lot of the time we find ourselves struggling and caught off guard when it is the case that our lives feel disrupted and we feel like there's a delayed response in the way that kind of we activate and navigate through disruption because we're too busy being and feeling stunned as a result of it. So what I wanted to do is give you some perspectives to think on and to ponder and to adopt so that the next time you go through a life disruption, you have the equipment and the tools to respond accordingly and in a timely fashion, of course. So <laughs> with that preface, it's interesting. My first perspective, the first point of view that I have around life's disruptions is don't be surprised. And I think that it's it's so interesting that anytime our lives feel disrupted, we're so caught off guard, we're so blindsided. And I think that's because we have this mindset, this belief that life is supposed to be predictable, that we're supposed to have a sense of what's going to take place on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's actually a fallacy. That's that's actually sort of the misconception. And, and when we anchor ourselves on this concept or this idea of stability, that's why disruption can be so discombobulating. But if we embrace disruption as, hey, this is part of life and no, I can't predict when it's gonna happen, but I can say definitively that disruptions are going to take place. Like life is not predictable. It was never meant to be predictable. We're better equipped at withstanding the shock of the disruption if we embrace this belief that disruptions shouldn't be surprises in that they happen, right? So even if we're surprised when it happens, we shouldn't be surprised that it happens. All of us are gonna face life disruptions and the best way to equip ourselves is to anticipate that at some point in the game, the carpet is gonna be pulled underneath our feet and that's okay, that's life, it happens to everyone, it will happen to us and we're going to be okay. Always know that no matter how rough how you know horrible the disruption is know that you're gonna be okay it's an opportunity to level up to skill up and you know dust yourself off brush yourself off and keep pushing forward but first it's very important that we recognize that disruption is part of life it will happen to each and every one of us and we don't get to choose our disruptions we don't get to choose the ways that our lives feel like they're blowing up but we can recognize that however it translates for each of us, we have the equipment, we have the tools to push through it. And if we don't have those, we can most certainly develop them. So I kind of preface into our second point, which is level up. Anytime there's a disruption, the only posture to take is level up, skill up. And I was a huge fan of Pokemon growing up. And I think when we watch these different cartoons like Pokemon or, you know, Dragon Ball Z, every episode there's some disruption, there's some conflict, there's some struggle. And I think that is very reminiscent of life, you know? Like there is never going to be, you know, a, a, a a permanent state of bliss. You know, bliss is even only bliss because we've pushed through a difficult period. And I think that when it comes to difficulties, when it comes to challenges that we face in life, the only response that is in our best interest is to level up. We are not going to let disruptions break us. We're not going to let disruptions destroy us. We are going to let them make us, right? And maybe who we were before the disruption is no longer going to exist after the disruption, but who we are after the disruption is always someone that can be a 2.0 version as a result of what took place, regardless of what took place. And I think that that's a choice that we make. That's power that we retain when we decide how it is that disruption is going to translate in our lived experience. And this, um, and this brings us to number three. And point number three about disruptions is really recognizing that things can happen to you or with you. And this is very important because it takes on a leadership role in who authors the different chapters, the different phases and stages of your life. And when you recognize that, when you think that life happens to you, it's very much a victim's approach and it puts you in this state of helplessness where you're just kind of letting life beat you down. And life can really, you know, it can hand deliver quite the beating, but if you recognize that life happens with you and though you can't predict or control the circumstances that you might be facing, you always have within your ability to fight back. And even if you don't know how to fight, you start awkwardly and you figure it out as you go, right? We're not always gonna feel prepared. We're not always gonna feel equipped, but who said we needed to be? I mean, all you need to do is respond do whatever you think you're supposed to do and then pivot and reiterate and perfect your response as you get better familiar with 
your opponent and as you recognize what its weaknesses are. And, and, and that's going to make you more sophisticated in the way that you respond. And as you retain all of that different muscle memory, based on all the different disruptions that you're going to experience in life, you're gonna become more apt more adept at responding to disruptions in life, more nimbly, you're gonna be more agile. You're gonna be more visionary about the way that you translate this disruption in your life moving forward. And you're going to recognize that no matter what happens to you, you hold the pen. You're the one who writes your autobiography and you're the author of the way that this story unfolds. And no, maybe, you know, you have different people deciding that they're gonna play the villain to your story, but you always decide how that story ends. And that's not a power you give away to anyone. So always make sure that you adhere to point three and think about this perspective as like a fundamental belief that you need to integrate which is that things can happen to you or with you and make a point to, to ensure that it happens with you because that means you retain authorship of that story and you decide how that story ends the villains you know i can't decide who wants to be the villain in my story but i will definitely dictate the role that that villain plays and the way that story ends it will never end with them on top so long as i am holding that pen let me tell you my first tip as it relates to disruption is recognizing that disruption comes with letting go of something it comes with an ending it comes with something that is forcing closure on you and Here's the thing, we often get stuck in wishing for and hoping for a past state or our past existence or experience that is no longer part of our lived realities, right? So it's very important that we recognize when we need to grieve, we need to go through the process of grieving and letting go of what no longer is, right? And sometimes we get stuck and we're like, you know, we wish we were there and we go through this cycle of coulda, woulda, shouldas. I think I've mentioned in the video, coulda, woulda, shoulda don't help anybody. We need to embrace our present reality. And if that means we grieve what no longer is part of our present reality so that we can make the most of this present moment, then that's what we need to do. And the quicker that we step into grieving, going through that recovery process, the quicker we're more able to embrace and really benefit from what this present moment offers. And oftentimes we're too blinded by what it is that we're missing to see what opportunities are right in front of us that we're not taking time to pay attention to because we're too busy stuck in the past. It's important that we always acknowledge and recognize that the past no longer exists. Yesterday is doesn't exist. It is as real as my memory of it is, right? And so we're dwelling in the past is dwelling in a version of reality that no longer, you know, it is no longer tangible. So it's very important that we, we focus on the present moment. We see the opportunities that exist in this present moment. We grieve in this present moment so that we can appreciate what takes place in the present. And that means we let go of the past. We let go of what doesn't serve us and we embrace recovery, recognizing that, that means that, you know, it's closure and we can give ourselves closure if we kind of step into recovery, recognizing that no matter how much we long for a time that once was, you know, it was simple, you know, we were naive, you know, whatever, you know, fill in the blank. That's not the case. And the more time that we spend, like, you know, just acknowledging, hey, like that was nice while it lasted, but this is my now and I need to step into the now to either push through this now, if it's not a now that is particularly pleasant or to appreciate what I actually do have and not let this be a moment that I'm now regretting in the future. So let's not get into that cycle. It's very important that we recognize when it's time to grieve, allowing us to recover and to let go. And then number five, embrace what comes next. Like the future is uncertain and that's the beautiful part of the future. And I think that this whole, uh, you know, desire to control the future, to make the future predictable in order to reinforce this illusion of security. I think that that's something that doesn't help us in the long run. It's better to recognize that there's nothing about the future that we have control over. And if it happens the way that we want it to, that is great. That's awesome. There's nothing about what we did that willed that reality into, you know, that willed that experience into reality. And we need to recognize that when it is the case that the future comes and it's not what we anticipated, that's okay. We don't need to control every aspect of our lives in order for our lives to be enjoyable. And I don't know who fed us that narrative, but that person really, you know, take away their pen. I mean, that narrative is toxic in so many subliminal subversive ways. And I think that when we embrace the uncertainty, the surprise, the unexpectedness of the future, we allow ourselves to be surprised, to be swept away, to enjoy moments for what they are. And 
and to kind of embrace the fact that we can't really control anything outside of ourselves, right? Outside of our own desires, beliefs, and wishes. And it's important that we recognize the, you know, the line that separates my desire with reality and my ability to control, you know, aspects of my life with, you know, what aspects I can't control. And the important part about embracing the future for all that it is, is recognizing that a lot of what happens in the future, we're not going to be ready for. We're not going to be ready for everything and anything that's going to take place or even when it takes place, even when we're bracing ourselves for the worse it's never going to be something that we're ready for once we experience it and even if we're waiting for like the highest high sometimes when you put too much pressure on something it makes it anticlimactic and it's just important to recognize you know whatever happens come what may whether i have the skills for it or not whether it's going to involve me leveling up or just sitting back and kind of enjoying that moment for what it is i embrace it i embrace the future for what it is which is an uncertainty that I'm sure was is gonna leave an impression <laughs> what kind of impression I don't know but I don't need to know to feel secure in my ability to navigate accordingly so those are my five tips on how to deal with disruption I hope that they're helpful to you I hope that they're beneficial to you and I hope that they give you food for thought in the way that you look at the future and the way that you maybe try to control the future in order to feel more safe and secure I think that recognizing that you're safe and secure because of who you are and what you bring to every setting that you're in is, is much more grounded in a sense of safety and security than feeling like you can control all elements of your environment. I don't think that that is a healthy frame. I don't think it's even realistic. And it's important that we all shed that so that we're better prepared to deal with, you know, the uncertainties that, that are way more prevalent now than they ever were. But at least they're so prevalent now that it makes us rethink and our values and beliefs around stability and predictability and how we can create values and beliefs that help us deal with volatility and uncertainty. In any case, that's this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something from it. And of course, if you're still here, subscribe to my channel. Definitely engage with this video. Like, comment, and share. Share it with someone you know needs to hear this, of course, and we'll see you soon.